good people, and welcome back to the channel. Today is Catch Up Sunday, and it is my plan to post three reviews by the end of the day. And for my first video, I want to share my thoughts and feelings on episodes four and five of season three's Put a Ring on It. Now, I know I missed posting my review for last week's episode, but a crazy thing called life happened, and I promised to make it up to everybody on the back end. So for the purposes of this video, I'll essentially just share what I think about each couple's progress on the show, and I'll give my prediction on whether the couples will split or get married by the end of the season. So without any further delay, let's jump right in. First on, let's talk about Otis and Charlie. Just as I predicted, Otis and Charlie agreed to go on a date with Milan and Brent. I think Otis is definitely more interested in Milan than Charlie was with Brent. If there's one pattern that I noticed with this couple, it is that they tend to do a tit for tat. For example, I think if Otis declined to go on a second date with Milan, then Charlie would have declined to go on a second date with Brent. But as you all saw on their second dates, after Milan showed Otis all of her tattoos, it got the attention of Charlie, and she tried to make Otis jealous by having Brent help her with leg exercises. I think it's also worth noting that a large part of the group scene for episode four was focused on the word scolded and Charlie painting herself as a victim of Otis's mean-spirited attacks. It was always my opinion that Dr. Nicole got sucked into trying to hold Otis accountable for how Charlie says he makes her feel versus trying to understand Otis's point of view on the matter. I know a lot of fans on the show were team Charlie in episode four, but I think episode five may have changed the minds of some fans. Charlie essentially turned into Otis's mother, whispering to him like they were in church and threatening to embarrass the both of them. It is extremely clear that the two of them have issues that are beyond whatever help they can receive on this show. I think that by the end of the season, Otis and Charlie will eventually stay together and get married because they're so used to dealing with their own dysfunction and the physical attraction is just too strong. Next, let's talk about Shorty and Kenny for a little bit. Just as I predicted, both Shorty and Kenny wouldn't go on more than one date with their respective dates, Hollywood and Myasia. In episode four, Shorty claims that Hollywood was a great fit for her, but she just wasn't ready to give up on Kenny just yet. And naturally, I gotta throw a red flag on the play. Because throughout this season, Shorty has all but confirmed that Kenny is dragging her down and he doesn't offer her what she's looking for in a husband or a life partner. So I'm not really sure how a process like this is gonna change Kenny for the better, given what we as the viewing audience have seen from him thus far. And of course, Kenny had to drop my Asia. With Myasia and Shorty being former co-workers, it would have been a bad look if Kenny continued to date her publicly. Then again, Shorty would have probably wanted Kenny to fall in love with someone else so that she could move on from their relationship. In episode five, I thought it was a bit too honest for Shorty to claim that Kenny tends to chase after women that are out of his league, but it is what it is. Also in episode five, they went on dates with two new people, but their dates really weren't that memorable in my opinion. I think by the end of the season, Shorty and Kenny will likely end up like Ashley and Hollywood, in that they will stay together, but ultimately go their separate ways somewhere down the line. Shorty is a very beautiful woman, she has a lot to offer, and from what she's been telling us, it will be in her best interest to leave Kenny expeditiously. And lastly, let's talk about Shay and Alfonso. It is my opinion that Shay is, for lack of a better term, a loose cannon, and she should have never signed up for a show like this if she's gonna act a fool whenever Afonso is in the presence of another woman. I was embarrassed for her and for them as a couple when they were on the double date with the two new dates at the Japanese restaurant. Shay wasted no time disrespecting and trying to fight Tayshiri. And if security wasn't there, I think Tayshiri would have knocked Shay clean out because it looked like she was about that life. But it's pretty clear that Shay and Alfonso can't even begin to work on the issues surrounding Alfonso's perceived infidelity as well as his issues with his mother until Shay can work on her issues of jealousy. It is my opinion that as toxic as their relationship is, Shay will agree to marry Alfonso by the end of the season because she enjoys complacency and stability over peace. In fact, I think Alfonso may be too afraid to leave the relationship because Shay will shut it all the way down. But on a scale of one to 10, I would give episode four a five and episode five a four. I think that this season started off strong, but with each new episode, it's becoming more and more clear that none of these folks have any business being on reality TV outside of providing entertainment and a distraction to fans of the show who desperately need it. 
but this marks the end of my video and I'll be back on schedule with my put a ring on it reviews going forward. So if you have any comments related to either episode or the review, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll be sure to reply to each and every comment. Until next time, stay tuned and stay safe. Peace.